Many students are super surprised to learn that the CCIE lab exam is an open book test. You heard that correctly. This is an open book test. To elaborate on exactly what we mean and to guide Ronnie in his journey to CCIE, join me in this episode where we're going to discuss the Cisco documentation available to you in the CCIE lab exam. Well, Ronnie, did first of all, were right. you aware of this? Did you know that the documentation is available to you in the lab? I think that the first time I heard about it is when you told me that really? it was actually available during the lab. Yeah, right? yeah. It's a very interesting thing, right? It's surprising. It really is. Oh, my gosh, the documentation is there for me? And let's, I think, start right there. Okay. What is going to be available for Ronnie? Well, let's take a look. If if you start at Cisco.com, Ronnie, what I'd like you to get in the habit of doing is going up to the support menu okay. and then going down here and clicking on all products. And you see this page right here, this all products support page. I'm sure you've right. actually come across this uh -huh. many times, right? In your navigation. Sure. This page right here is the money shot, if you will. This is what you get. So you'll have an icon or a button, some kind of a shortcut, right? Maybe even just a link. When you click on it, you are brought right here. And you can go anywhere in this body of documentation. If you try and go outside of this group of documentation, you get an error message. Okay. And it'll be like, you know, not found, right? And that's just telling you that, oh, okay, sure enough, I tried to go to an external link. Now, notice, Ronnie, you don't have any search capability. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So one of the things that I'm going to challenge Ronnie with is the ability to find things in the documentation. Let's do one real quick. How about the DMVPN? All right. You need to know it backwards, forwards, inside and out. Let's say you're in the lab exam and you realize, oh my gosh, I forgot what command I need here. And you need to find it in the documentation quickly without searching. Ronnie could go, all right, no problem. I'm going to go to the iOS. I'm going to go to the version of iOS code in the lab. Let's just pretend it's 15.2 MNT. I don't think it is, but we'll just pretend that it is. He goes there. In the documentation tab here, he can go to the configuration category. And then in the configuration category, notice there's this view all documentation of this type. That's important. Now he's in the configuration guides for his iOS and under the security services and VPN section, he has secure connectivity, securing the data plane and securing user services. So do you see what one of the challenges is here? Where is right. the DMVPN? It's just too much information to say that, to, to experience it the first time in lab. That's exactly right, Ronnie. I want you practicing okay. with the documentation so you know. And I got to be honest, I forget which one of these the DMVPN is in. I'm going to guess secure connectivity. Mm -hmm. And so I click on that and the formatting's a bit a bit messed up, but I guess correctly. Look at that. The DMVPN configuration guide. Now, Ronnie knows how to quickly find this information, almost. Now what Ronnie has to do is he has to become familiar with how this particular guide is laid out. So most of what Ronnie would be responsible for, turns out, is in the very first chapter. But just remember that when he gets to portions of the documentation on complex features like DMVPN, BGP, 
MPLS, whatever that complex topic might be, he needs to spend some time with how are those subchapters arranged and which of the subchapters apply to him. So really, Ronnie, consider to, to start practicing with this documentation. One of the tips that I did was even if I didn't think I would need it, I made sure I could locate things in the docs. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, sure. here, here's a good example. OSPF. Right. I feel like I know that really well. And I certainly did going into the lab. I don't know it anymore like I used to know it. Ronnie was laughing at me in an episode where I forgot how to summarize from one area to another. Because if you don't practice it, you don't have it in your memory banks. But... When I was getting ready for my lab, Ronnie, I knew OSPF really super well, but I still made sure I could find everything in the docs right. because I knew what might happen to me. And that is, they're uncanny with this, the proctors will compose an OSPF question okay. where you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know I could do that at OSPF. And now if you know right where it's documented, you could jump into the documentation and look at some of those commands you've never used before and right. what they do. Does that make sense? Sure. Like I wanted to know where everything was. Now, Ronnie, the configuration guides, they're like the main thing okay. I would focus on if I were you. Sure. But there's another tool in the documentation. So let me click the back button here, or actually better, close this tab, and let me go back here to where we initially navigated. We're in the configuration guides, but there is another valuable tool that students love. I didn't use this much at all, but, but I want to show it to you because a lot of students swear by this approach, and that is the command references. So notice there's a reference section and they might go like, oh my gosh, how did you, how did you survive Anthony without the DMVPN command reference, right? And you know, I, I didn't use it, but I wanna show you this because sure enough, there's the security and VPN section. And now here's all your security commands from A to Z. What the hmm. command reference is nice for is getting every detail possible on a particular command, right? So like, oh, I'll just jump in here and pick one randomly. Like, uh, how about, oh, the class map type inspect. So you're gonna get the highest level of detail about that command and all of its options in the command reference. So your two main bodies of documents, Ronnie, the configuration guides and the command references. All right, so Anthony, let's go back to the idea of actually using it during the exam, okay? So prepping up, making sure we understand how this works, but when you're actually in the middle of whatever question it is, uh, how do you use it effectively to be able to, to say, hey, uh, how much time do we actually need to kind of limit ourselves to? or should I sit there and make sure I go over the whole thing if I'm not sure? How do we actually do that? Yeah, it's a great question. So what I did was I made sure that I could find anything, any technology super quickly in the documentation. That I would highly recommend you do that. Okay. And then be ready to not use it. Hopefully you never go in there. The day I passed, I think I went in there once, maybe twice. That's it. Okay. And a, a classic example of why I went in there, Ronnie, was, oh, that's an involved config. I didn't memorize how to do that, right. but I know right where it is. Okay. You know what I mean? Sure. So when you get to a config where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to memorize all those steps. If you know where those steps are right in the documentation then you don't have to memorize those steps. Make sense? Yes. Um, those students that are like, oh yeah, I was in the documentation all day during the config section, it, it, typically they've failed mm -hmm. the config section. 
You know, yeah. think about it. If, 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 if you have to look up how to do an EIGRP neighborship, right. you're in big trouble. You shouldn't be needing to look that up. Now, one last tip I want to give here is I bummed Ronnie out when I pointed out there was no search. <laughs> but there is a little bit of a search, and that is, guess what is going to work? Because you're in a web browser, and because the web browser is standard, right? You're going to be able to do a control F, and at least you would be able to search on a page. So here I'm pulling up all the instances of the word crypto, right? So you can search with the control F okay. on a page, and that's better than nothing, I suppose. No doubt. Yep. All right. But cool. no Google searching, yeah. Ronnie, and no phoning a friend. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, everybody, this has been, I hope you agree, a very important episode of our journey to CCIE for Ronnie Wong because... That documentation being there for you, it really could be the difference in passing or failing the lab exam. Let's face it, it really could be the difference maker. But it's a double-edged sword because if you have to be in the documentation a lot during your exam, yikes, that's probably a really bad sign. Well, we are just getting started in these Journey to CCIE episodes. Next up, we're going to, by request, teach a topic at the CCIE level. We're going to do Ether Channel, one of the most early topics that you're responsible for in your objectives for CCIE. So you'll watch as Ronnie and I go through that topic at an IE level. That's coming up in the next episode. Be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV YouTube channel and maybe even click on that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of these episodes of Ronnie's Journey to CCIE. Thanks so much for joining us.